back, everyone. It's a little bit before 7.15. We just uh, came out of executive session to discuss the town manager's um, annual evaluation. So thank you for being patient. Um, we will now move on to general public comments, item number five. If anybody would like to speak, you can come to the podium and speak. No, not seeing any. Public comments are closed. Uh, moving on to approval of minutes for November 16th, 2016's regular meeting. If the, can I have a motion, please? Move for approval. Second. Any comments, questions, uh, corrections? Not uh, seeing any. All in favor? That's six to zero. Um, adjustments to the agenda. I don't see any. Um, sorry. Oops. Vote again. Seven to zero. Did I say six zero? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Seven. Keep them in line. I'll crack a joke about only counting to four later. <laughs> um, <laughs> items to be signed uh, at the treasurer's warrants. I'll uh, take care of that with the town clerk as we uh, move forward. Uh, old business. There is none at this time. New business. Order number 16-079. <coughs> an act on the request to adopt the Cumberland County Hazard Mitigation Plan for 2017's update. And I'll turn this over to the town manager. Yes. If you don't mind, Chief Thurlow is here, and he certainly is more, uh, quite more capable of uh, introducing this matter to the council. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Councilman. Thank you for the opportunity. I prepared a memo and some background information that was in your packet. Uh, this is essentially a process that we have to do every five years to meet FEMA regulations. Um, the town benefits from this because as a uh, local community, this does provide access to some grant funding for hazard mitigation projects um, and for the public's edification. When we have a naturally declared disaster like a hurricane or some of the blizzards that we've had in the past, when FEMA declares a declaration, a percentage of the money that is spent restoring public costs is set aside in the special uh, hazard mitigation fund to go back in after the disaster and upsize culverts or do that type of work to prevent future uh, claims for the government and to be eligible for that uh, grant funding we have to keep an up-to-date hazard mitigation plan rather than every community have to do it the county has graciously picked up the uh, burden of a very burdensome process as you can see if you've uh, reviewed the plan Scabro, uh, uh, Mike Shaw and I uh, certainly have contributed the Scabro specific information uh, to it but the rest of it is is county work that uh, help leverage some of our work and, and get this ready for you tonight. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the council? No, thank you. Thank you, Chief. I did. Oh, I'm sorry, Chief. Is it? Sorry. sorry. <laughs> is the, uh, I did get a chance to, to look at it, um, or I, I tried to find it online. Is, it, is the 2017 one complete? And updated on online or, or the twenty there is a draft of the twenty seventeen. It won't be complete in terms of anything. FEMA's actual hundred percent compliance until all of the communities in the county go through the process as you are tonight. They've approved the draft, it's been through several revisions, they've approved the content of it. It will become officially approved once everybody completes this process. I see. So that way it was still a draft. Correct. Got it. Any other questions? Not seeing any. Thank you. And um, I'd like to open up the, um, um, the item for an, any public comments. Any public comments? Not seeing any. We'll close public comments. Uh, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Comments? Councillor uh, Donovan? Seems to be a pretty straightforward procedural matter, and I support it. Councillor? Yeah, I also support it, but I would suggest people take a look at it. It's quite alarming um, in terms of it, it outlines some risks and how they would be mitigated. And um, it's, uh, it's definitely an alarming read. Any other comments? Not seeing any. All in favor? None opposed. Moving on to item number nine, non-action items. There are none. There are none. Um, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports, if I can start with Councilor Donovan. Uh, I attended the energy committee meeting today. Uh, uh, Chris uh, is the liaison, but I wanted to attend the last meeting uh, 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 as chair. Uh, we are rewriting our energy plan. We put a lot of effort into trying to get that process uh, off uh, and running today. 
we had our new sustainability coordinator present, Kerry Strout, very impressive person, uh, a very broad background. She gave us the opportunity to learn a little bit more about her background, stormwater management, uh, energy efficiency projects, uh, uh, really going to be a remarkably good addition to the town. I spent the day yesterday with her also uh, uh, working on the composting pilot program that we've been working on. Uh, we met at Echo Maine, and of course, you need to have the hauler, Pine Tree Waste, get on board with this, and they are. Uh, Echo Maine uh, as a collection point, and then you need to have the garbage go somewhere uh, at a reduced cost and be uh, appropriately used. We took a trip to Exeter, Maine, up north of Bangor, uh, to Stony Vale Dairy, and it was truly a, a, a remarkable, it's a business model that you would just be amazed by. It's a dairy that then takes all the manure, mixes it with all the garbage, and creates methane by which they then power an electric generation facility and sell power to the grid. Uh, they then take the slurry that comes out of this mess and turn it into a fertilizer, comes out as a fertilizer, uh, and they use it over 2,000 acres to uh, fertilize the fields for the crop that uh, allows these hundreds of cows, and just hundreds and hundreds of them, uh, uh, to be fed. So uh, it comes back, the, what, the residue, and you, you just bag your garbage, throw it in. It's, uh, they have a thrasher that takes all the uh, paper and plastic out. It was just such a remarkable uh, cycle. Uh, and they send back this small amount of waste to Echo Maine that burns it. Uh, uh, as a part of an electric generation facility that Echo Maine runs. So uh, for those who have been wondering, what are we going to do with our composting, this looks like a tremendous opportunity to be a participant. And all the other communities that we kind of vie for as far as reputation were all present at Echo Maine and applauding how Scarborough is a little bit ahead of them. Falmouth, Yarmouth, Cape Elizabeth, South Portland. So uh, it was uh, it was quite a nice day. Thank you, Councilor Owen. Uh, yes, uh, Historic Preservation Implementation Committee met last night, um, and I'd just like to to say that this is a really <coughs> small group of really hardworking volunteers, and I'd like to thank them um, for what they do. Um, some of the things that we talked about were the um, uh, cemetery cleanup projects, um, the um, some of the historic boundary markers around town and, and uh, um, <coughs> finding the location of them, um, as well as uh, the uh, site list of historically significant <coughs> properties in town. Um, and uh, specifically, there's, there's a, a one-room schoolhouse on um, Holmes Road that, um, that is being discussed at, at present. So um, the, that's uh, an update on their activities. Thank you. No, no committee to report on as of yet. <laughs> Thank you, though. Um, it's so hard. They actually got me laughing. Sounds like clear. Yeah, I only have one just because of the overlap that we have. But um, Councillor Hayes and the town manager and I uh, all got to meet. We started talking about the public safety building. Mm. Um, so we had our first meeting for that. It went really well, actually. Um, basically, it was just sort of like getting organized. Um, we did, they did actually, um, just so people are aware, Councillor Hayes and I are not voting members of that group. We've made that decision going into it. We just felt it was better for us to um, just sort of be true liaisons for them, uh, resources for them, uh, so that we could also become advocates for them without it sort of mashing in with being also voting members. Um, and I think it's going to actually work out a lot better that way. Um, but they did vote, and they've decided that um, Kevin Freeman, who a lot of you know from SEDCO, is going to be the chair of that committee, um, which I think was a really great decision on their part. Uh, their vice chair is Greg Hanscom, and the recording secretary is Judy Roy. Mm -hmm. So um, I have to say it was a, it's a, an impressive group of people. Um, we did go around the room and talk about everybody's qualifications, and um, it's a room full of people that really have a lot to offer. 
So I think it's going to be um, exciting moving forward. Um, and we're hopeful, I know that Peter and I are both hopeful to be reporting back. We do have a pretty hefty schedule. We meet, um, we are going to be meeting twice a month, um, the second and fourth Wednesdays at 8 a.m. at the Public Safety Building for at least 90 minutes and we may start adding meetings um, if we start breaking off into like subcommittees and things like that. So, but the first meeting went very well um, and Chief Thurlow actually um, is helping with the minutes and um, is, has become an incredible resource. So it's a really exciting project. That's it for me. Councilor Hayes. Actually, I don't have anything to update tonight. Thank you. Councilor um, Chiazzo. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Bill covered energy quite thoroughly, so thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. Less, less talking I have to do. We'll get out of here that much faster. Um, uh, school board met. Um, they've had a change in leadership. Uh, Kelly Murphy is the school board chair and Jody Shea is the uh, vice chair and I'm not sure if finance was announced or not. It was announced and Jody is still going to be the chair of finance as well. So Excellent. That's Thank all. you. And I have uh, one report for the library. Um, there is no meeting this month for the library's uh, board of directors. <laughs> However, they did want me to uh, remind everyone that their annual fund drive is underway and if you'd like to visit uh, their website, you can make a donation through their website uh, for the annual fund. So that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Tom Manager's report. Yes, thank you. Um, just to dovetail on Councilor St. Clair's comments, I did attend the Public Safety Building Committee meeting. I don't intend to be a permanent fixture there, but certainly a resource uh, that um, I'll come and go as they need me. Uh, one thing I do want to get them started in the right direction on is making sure they have the right consulting team to assist them in their efforts. And Councilors will be are aware that we're interested in doing a master plan for the for the campus behind us here for the whole municipal campus, uh, and that's uh, the, the interest in that is is born in a lot of different things: the, the long range facility plan, the fact that public safety building is more than just being talked about. Uh, we've got recreation facilities for seniors that are uh, scheduled for as soon as this spring. All of those things are coming together at the same time, but. In hindsight, we really think it's important for the public safety process to kind of uh, take care of itself uh, before we begin that. I would like to revisit that as soon as we can. I think that's probably six or eight weeks off, so it's not an, an eternity. But I think it's really important for the public safety process to be independent and to kind of run its course before um, we proceed with that other piece. So uh, I'm excited that they've begun and, and certainly pleased to help support them in their efforts. Uh, also, the council is aware we are in search of additional funding to help with the Operation Hope program. And we uh, had a, a good grant opportunity. Unfortunately, we came up short on that. Uh, but there is, appears to be some good news at the federal level. There is some significant funding that I think is uh, on the president's desk, so to speak. And uh, we've made connections with both Senator Collins and King's office to help understand how we might access that. Um, so we'll have a meeting next week. And we're we're optimistic that might um, be an answer to us. Just to remind everyone, our interest is really to find a bridge to something better and more sustainable. Um, there's a lot of things the Scarborough PD does well, and uh, they've really exceeded my expectations in this regard, but it's not sustainable long term. Um, we're not professionals in this industry, but we're pleased to do our part. Um, but we also can't stop in the middle without um, an alternative to look to. So we're really looking to find a, a bridge to something else in the future. <coughs> also, just a point of interest, um, some people on council and, and perhaps in the public might uh, recall several years back, we were engaged in a planning process with our adjoining communities and the main turnpike authority regarding the, the so-called Gorham East-West bypass. This intends to look at and solve some of the problems that we have in North Scarborough and areas north of us. For anyone that's tried to get through that area of town uh, in the morning and in the evening, Running Hill Road, 114, 22, it's just uh, incredibly busy. And uh, so there's a group of communities uh, with Maine Turnpike Authority and DOT that are looking at alternatives to help alleviate that congestion. And the MTA is kind of breathing life back into the process. So we're interested in getting reengaged. And this might be a good topic for a workshop uh, should it start to gain some traction again. Um, the implications could be fairly significant for us, so it's important that everyone appreciates um, what's being talked about. Also, I want to thank and congratulate Councillor Donovan. Uh, I recruited him to serve as a chairperson on the Metro Coalition. 
uh, Metro Coalition is a subset of uh, uh, GPCOG, which is the uh, Greater Portland Councils of Government. This is, uh, that's 28 communities, is GBCOG. Metro Coalition is seven communities. It's Portland and kind of the first ring communities. And we tend to have some issues in common and some different issues than do the outer communities. And this group has been responsible for a number of things through the years. Uh, they conceived of and implemented the Regional Crime Lab, which is up and running and a success. Uh, some, some joint economic development initiatives, and Scarborough's time is up uh, in terms of being chair of this effort, and, and Bill was kind enough to volunteer in that regard. So perhaps in the coming months, you'll hear more and more um, about those efforts. Two last things. Uh, we do have the tax appeal mediation scheduled for December 22. Uh, this is for the consolidated tax appeal cases. We think it is important to get together and to see if there's a way to accelerate uh, and perhaps settle these. Um, mm -hmm. You might recall Law Court has finally ruled on, on all these matters and they've been remanded back to the Board of Assessment Review without any direction really. They just said find a, a reasonable um, abatement. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of latitude there and we've been preparing for this. I expect it will be an all-day session and uh, finding a, a mediator was surprisingly easy. The first one we proposed all parties accepted. He is highly respected. Bob Crowley is his name has a, a deep experience in tax uh, uh, issues, but more importantly is known to be a, a tremendously fair person. So we're really encouraged about getting that process started. And lastly, I just wanted to foreshadow something that may happen as soon as next Wednesday. Um, we had a very light agenda this month, but uh, don't let that um, fool you. We've got a very full agenda. I've been kind of keeping things at bay so the council can get organized and get its feet under itself, so to speak. Uh, but as you're, many of you are aware, we have this newfound interest in multifamily housing in town. And there's a lot of components associated with that. And this council has dealt with any number of zone changes that have allowed this use to occur. Um, but now it's becoming real. And we've got a number of large scale projects that are, in, that are waiting to come forward. And each of them will uh, have to come to you for one thing or another. So, Staff has been thinking for a number of weeks now that it would be helpful to have a workshop to provide some of the background context, uh, issues of growth management ordinance, how that works, and the permits that are restricted and regulated through that process uh, are uh, impact fee ordinances which are companion to that. Uh, all of these things are interrelated and so we'd love to engage the council as soon as next week if we could in uh, without any pressure of, of taking a vote, but just a conversation, an introduction of the related issues. So I'll work with uh, Chairman Babine and uh, look to put something out, but I, uh, in the interest of time, to make sure everyone has a good opportunity to understand the issues before you ever ask to consider a vote, I really suggest we meet as soon as next week. So um, we could, I could pull you tonight to see what your availability is, or we can suggest some things uh, by email, whatever your preference is, but I was looking at Wednesday, next Wednesday night, if that works. What time? I'm up at your convenience, 6.30 or 7. Can we, is everyone comfortable making a commitment tonight, or would you rather wait and do that by email? I can Want to do I it at 5? We, we're totally at uh, your convenience. Whatever is easier. I can do a 6. I would think an hour and a half uh, might be required to have a full conversation. I can do it at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. Yeah, that's great by us. 6 okay. p.m. Wednesday. That would be the 14th of December. And as a courtesy, we'll invite the Planning Board, Long Range, and maybe SEDCO just to be in the audience. Uh, I think they would equally benefit from just <coughs> hearing the conversation, um, but not necessarily be at the table with you unless you need their expertise for one reason or another. Could you get that list one more time? Uh, planning Board, Long Range Planning, who's been dealing with this issue for a couple of meetings, and SEDCO. Is there anyone else? What about the housing lines? Sure, we can extend that invite, uh, that, that group's meeting tomorrow. Um, would, would anybody object, to, since it is a um, workshop format, I would like to have maybe the chairs of those committee participate in the workshop discussion okay. and maybe the other members, that way we're inclusive of them. That's okay? Yes, ma'am. I do have a conflict on the 14th, but if, if I'm the only one, you should by all means go ahead. We could do it another night. I'm not wedded to that date either. I would have to look at my calendar and I don't have that here. Why don't we go Let me send out some option tomorrow and we can firm this up Sorry in the morning. Sorry about that. up in the morning. Great. Thank you for your attention. Anything else? No. Thank you. Um, and. Now I know.
last item. Actually, um, it's not on here, but don't we usually have uh, public comments at the end of the night as well? No. Oh, we don't? Okay. No. I just wasn't sure. Um, uh, council member comments, starting with Council Chiazzo. So, um, two things. Um, first was we attended the tree lighting ceremony for uh, the town on, I believe it was Saturday, I think it was. Um, great event. Um, community services a fantastic job. The fire pit, Santa Claus, so obviously a huge draw. Um, had a long line even after the fireworks were done. There were fireworks there, by the way, just for the record. Um, uh, very well done, very well attended. Um, I, I Talking to Bruce Gulliver, I think, um, uh, Gulliver, I think it was a little over 400 people, uh, but he did say that the Lions, um, excuse me, the Rotary, I think it was, gave away um, approximately 800 cups of cocoa. So I think that might be a record. So uh, very well attended for sure. Um, and the second thing was I wanted to do a shout out to one of Scarborough's own, uh, David Grover, who is a recent graduate of Scarborough. Um, David was the swim captain here uh, last year. He took a gap year to hike the Appalachian Trail mm -hmm. and uh, was, was featured on Bill Green's uh, mm -hmm. Green Main, uh, I believe it was yesterday or the night before, uh, upon his successful completion mm -hmm. of that uh, trek. Uh, a lot skinnier, uh, but a lot wiser too. So congratulations to David. Um, very great, uh, great family, obviously, yeah. um, and, a, and a, a great experience for sure. Excellent. Uh, well, Hayes. Yeah, a couple things. I mean, first, just kind of a shout out to the Scarborough Kindness Project. Uh, last week, there was a, a, a conversation they put on at Wentworth School around civil discourse, and Terry Hayes came down, and it was well attended, and the folks are there. And Will, I'm sure you'll have a lot more detail, so I'll, I'll leave it at that, but thank you for okay. doing that. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to talk about is something that's been, it's been kind of sobering times, and it, it just really troubles me. I, I'm sure as everybody has picked up the news every day, police officers across the country are being targeted, and there's almost a daily shooting. And I mentioned that to some folks in town, and actually one individual took that and went up to an officer, Scarborough police officer, safety officer, and just said thank you. And the reaction that he got from that officer was just overwhelming. It was kind of the, the, the officer was just really appreciative that someone said thank you. So I'm just making an appeal that as other communities are dealing with this, we have some great public safety officials here. We should express our appreciation for what they do. So I thought I'd just share that. So thank you. Thank you. Council St. Clair. Good. Thank you. Council Donovan. Uh, we are in the process of uh, doing interviews for uh, consultants for the comprehensive plan and uh, the interview process was four candidates last week the town manager the planning staff the SEDCO director and I sat in on behalf of the town council uh, and these were outstanding candidates and so we're in the process of of doing the analysis to select them uh, Craig Friedrich and I met with Matt Sturgis the uh, town assessor uh, to uh, review and analyze the senior property tax relief program, see if there were ways in which we thought we could make it simpler. Uh, uh, the report we got back from the assessing department from Mr. Sturgis was they were thrilled with the efficiency of the program and uh, the good feeling that was created by the hundreds of people who came in and participated in it. So it was uh, very well received. Uh, we're going to study some data that we talked about with Mr. Sturgis uh, that he's going to uh, compile. But at the moment, without committing ourselves, we're pretty happy with the way it went. It's a very progressive system, but we want to confirm that it has that progressive <coughs> element to it, that the poorest people in town are the ones who get the state credit and the town credit. But So we're, we're working on that. Um, Avenue 2, we expect the legal opinion uh, to come in in the next week or two. Uh, and so I think that will be an active matter soon. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rowan? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, follow up on the, the uh, Peter's report on the, the kind of project and civility dialogue that we had last week. Um, we, we, it was very well attended. Um, I want to say thank you to Terry Hayes, mm -hmm. who came down from Buckfield, who's the um, state treasurer came down on her own dime, I wanted to point out. Um, and that uh, we had about 30 to 35 people there, and really it was just kind of an open discussion format about what, you know, what, what it means to have a civil 
conversation and, and kind of the impacts on um, on the things that you say to other people. Um, and we had um, several students from the high school. We had uh, the town manager, uh, the superintendent, um, chief of police, uh, director of the Scarborough Library. Oh, I saw it about half of the uh, town council and about half of the school board um, and um, um, and I thought it was a great turnout and thanks to everyone who came. Oh, and I'm sorry, and my next comment, <laughs> carry on. Um, December 3rd was the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Um, uh, the uh, Secretary General of the UN put out a message and um, if you'll indulge me for a minute, I'd like to read it. Um, and uh, Secretary General Bonn, said that 10 years ago this month, uh, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Convention of the Rights on Persons with Disabilities, one of the most widely ratified international human rights in instruments with 169 parties. The Convention has spurred significant progress in commitment, sorry, my keyboard jumped up, uh, in commitment and action for equality, inclusion, and empowerment around the world with disability being increasingly incorporated into the global human rights and development agendas. This year, United Nations member states have embarked on implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, our blueprint for peace, prosperity, dignity, and opportunity for all on a healthy planet. With its 17 interdependent sustainable uh, development goals, the 2030 Agenda is based on a pledge to leave no one behind. Achieving this requires the full inclusion and effective participation of persons with disabilities in society and development. Much remains to be accomplished before persons with disabilities can realize their full potential as equal and valued members of society. We must eliminate the stereotypes and discriminations that per perpetuate their exclusion and build an accessible, enabling, and inclusive environment for all. For the 2030 agenda to succeed, we must include persons with disabilities in implementation and monitoring and use excuse me, and use the convention as a guide. On this International Day of Persons with Disabilities, I urge national and local governments, businesses, and all actors in society to intensify efforts to end discrimination and remove the environmental and attitudinal obstacles that prevents persons with disabilities from enjoying their civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Let us work together for the full and equal participation of persons with disabilities in an inclusive and sustainable world that embraces humanity in all diversity. Uh, ban Ki-moon. Um, so while while I have my soapbox, um, <laughs> I just wanted to point out that uh, the U.S. has signed the Convention on, on the Rights of uh, Persons with Disability, but it was not ratified in the Senate. It, it actually requires a supermajority in the Senate, which is mm -hmm. um, of two thirds, um, which is six, six votes, and in 20. 12, it fell six votes short, um, which is, uh, I find, incredibly disappointing, um, especially mm -hmm. since it was actually based on the um, Americans with Disabilities Act. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I also want to point out that it, it does call for local governments to, to think about what we can do to be a more inclusive society. And with that, I'll step down. Thank you. Thank you. Council Paul Lee. Uh, yes, so first and foremost, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, the residents and voters of Scarborough. Um, it's really an honor uh, and privilege to, to have the opportunity to serve you and I promise I'm going to work hard. Uh, I think Peter and, and Will both touched on the, the Scarborough Kindness Project event last week. It was very well attended. What they did not tell you is that it was the night evening that it was pouring buckets and buckets of rain. And mm -hmm. so I was especially pleased with the turnout given uh, the fact that folks would, would have much preferred to be on their jammies and home. Mm -hmm. uh, and then third, and I, I've learned already, I need to bring my iPad with me because I don't have my notes properly, but um, someone in the audience may be able to help me. I think it's next week on December 13th, the uh, group Empower Me is bringing another film to Scarborough. Uh, they, they, if some, some of you may have attended Screenagers last year. Uh, it, or it was very really well done, and it, I think it's December 13th. Yeah, I think so. That's Tuesday. Th yeah, uh, at Wentworth, or is it at the high school? It's at the high school auditorium. So uh, it's the last film was well worth the watch and uh, dialogue afterwards. And so I hope those kinds of things, community events, can continue to bring people together and engaging in important conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for me, a couple of items. Uh, first, Council Foley, welcome aboard. Nice to have you. Um, I'm really excited to get into work with you and also Council Donovan. 
Um, thank you for uh, running again and staying, uh, staying with us. It's, um, it's great. I also wanted to personally thank you for being our chairman last year. Um, it was a very successful, uh, very effective, and a very strong year, and it really is attributed to your leadership, and I really wanted to say thank you. It's um, one that I hope to emulate as, as chairman now as well. Um, I did want to also uh, hand out uh, some items to everyone, if you can hand them that way. What I'm handing out is actually two items that I need back as soon as possible, um, preferably by Monday if I can. Um, the first is a uh, standing committee and liaison appointments. The chair is required to make those appointments and then make the recommendations and have the council approve them um, at our next meeting. So if I could get, um, my goal is to actually uh, complete that task by next week, um, issue a draft to each of you so you can see the full lineup before we actually submit that for a final vote on the 21st. Um, and the second is also a document is which, which you're asked to provide um, maybe five areas of attention or focus um, in our goal setting. So um, while we start a new uh, um, council year, we also have an opportunity to evaluate and assess last year's performance and we'll have that um, hopefully um, in the next month, um, as well as set new goals in the upcoming year. So think about where we've been last year. If you need uh, documents uh, to see where, what those goals are, a manager can send those out to us and we can go from there. Um, I believe um, there is some desire to maybe re-engage the consulting team we had last year, maybe not for as long of a session with them, but at least to facilitate the closure to make sure that we all agree to how do we assess our <coughs> performance since we already know now how to set the goals. So um, those two. The, the standing committee one, I did want to mention, because um, in speaking with each of you in advance about becoming chair, one of the things that is very clear, not only amongst us as a group, but also with our um, other stakeholders, is that there is a strong desire for stability and um, uh, calm, in that um, we have been so successful over the last few years that I really wanted to make notice tonight um, because it is such a um, high attention committee, um, the intent to name uh, the following three members to the finance committee so that there's some assurances that we will continue the path that we've already undertaken. Those three members will be Councillor Hayes, Councillor Chiazzo, and, and myself, um, which is an unusual step, but it's something that I've been asked to take on and willing to do so that there is that continuity from last year to this year with the school board's relationship. And, um, and um, under our rules, um, the first person named on that committee is actually the chairperson, and so uh, Councillor Hayes has agreed to be the chairperson for this year, so I really appreciate uh, that, Peter. Uh, we worked very closely for the last two years together, so I know that we're all going to be in a positive direction um, when we present the budget as a whole, so I appreciate uh, being able to make that announcement tonight. Um, last but not least, a um, couple of things actually I was going to start off on. I did want to mention, um, I know a couple of chairpersons in the past have really focused on um, some unfortunate passings of citizens, notable citizens, and I did want to mention because it seemed like we had a lot this last couple of weeks, and the three that I wanted to mention, um, the first is um, Peter Chadbourne. Peter was an employee of the fire department, um, and he was, um, no, sorry, employee of the police department. And his title was actually Chief of Sanitary Engineering because he was the, the custodian and he was a wonderful person. If you've ever had a chance to meet him, I did a couple of times. And um, he retired, I believe it was last year, and um, he passed away after a long illness. So uh, to, the, to the police department and his family, um, send our condolences. Also wanted to send condolences to the Corbo family. Uh, retired Marine Resource Officer Dave Corbo's father passed away, Paul. Um, Paul had been a member of the American Legion and had really had lived in Scarborough for a little over 60 years with his family, right on Ashland Drive, brought the family up, and so his passing um, should be noted and condolences sent. And last but not least, um, and there's many others, but um, Bob Carson, um, former fire chief, Rob Carson's father passed away. Um, Bob was, a, I believe, a 50-plus year member of the fire department, um, working way back when they were just volunteers. And so uh, I know his passing will be felt down in the Pine Point area and across the town. So to all three of those families, I wanted to send our condolences. And last but not least, um, on a happier note, I wanted to wish Councilor Chiazzo a happy birthday. It is his 47th birthday today, and he thought he was going to get out of here without somebody <laughs> saying something. <laughs> that, close. that close. So uh, with that in mind, I'll uh, accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Thank you. Sample.